and Carlette Lott. A podcast about life, love, and overcoming obstacles. Each week, we discuss the good, the bad, and the indifferent of life's interruptions. Now, here's your host, Chris and Carlette. Keep believing, don't go stressing, keep it moving. God, we're resting here to help you, here to bless you. Mm Check, 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 check. Here we go. Here we go. All right. This All right. Can you hear us? Sorry about today. This must. It's going to be a good episode. Yes, this is going to be good. Oh my god. This. This has lets you know. And I'm I'm sitting on here. I'm I'm texting. Oh Lord. Texting people. Technical we our people are back on the six that were here earlier. They're back. Thank you. Sorry about all this. Tell us where you're from in the chat. Yes, yes. Uh, let's see here. We're let let's go here. Um, this was a nightmare of. A That's all right though. We're here. We're here. All right. So let you know some stuff is going to get accomplished. Yes, right. everybody's going to. I mean, because seriously, I mean, the title is "Loving God More Than Food." Come on, that's serious. Yeah, I wish your brother-in-law was on here. I mean, your brother was on here. Okay. How, how do you know he's not? Uh, cause I know if it's any. Well, you I don't know. What? Don't start. Don't don't eat. If it's anything to deal with food, he might yes, be on. God is going to get the glory, Casey. You are so right. You are so right. Yeah. Listen, thank you all. We haven't. Can you talk in the mic? We can't hear you. Oh. And straighten it up, cause no, you know I'm no, a pet peeve. Cause yeah. I know, but this is the way I like it. You do your mic. I do my mic. Okay. Praise God. Oh, so. God. I feel you. Yes. Uh, we are back. We talked to you all two weeks ago. We, uh, took a break because of the holiday. Um, but actually, oh my God. actually, we actually sh- did a rebroadcast last Monday. Mr. Brian Grant, he was talking about financial freedom, how, uh, of entrepreneurs, how to, um, Hey, Jewel, how uh, Jewel said no sound, no sound. Jewel, Jewel you can't hear us. I see it on the broadcast. It's telling us. Can you hear us now? Maybe it might be a little bit delayed. Let me go to the. Um, let me turn it up on here. Check one, two. Can you hear us? Let me turn it up. Oh, I can yeah. hear it on yeah, here. It's okay. A- okay. Bernard Holmes said, oh, the, if the sound man. If the sound man. If is the on. good head deacon. The head chairman deacon. of the board say he can hear. Then, then, then we good. We, we good. <laughs> this is his business, okay? Yes, we had a rough start. It, Elder yes. uh, Bishop, uh, Deacon, he all three, you know. On, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that too. Oh, let me, yeah. Let me, I'm still trying to, my nerves. What's all is, the food for? Deke, listen, l- the title of tonight is Loving God More Than Food. You thought it was a food drive, didn't you? One day that's gonna happen soon. Yeah. Trust and believe. Okay. I think I think <laughs> Homie can eat all this. No, leave him alone. Oh. Leave him alone, Mashad. I see you, sir. Mashed potatoes over here. Some you know what? Papa John's pizza. You know what? I I'm noticing the trend, and What's I'm not that? gonna say nothing. Okay. I'm not gonna say nothing. But anyway, listen. We talked to you all two weeks ago live. We did a rebroadcast last week. Hey, Miss Brenda, and so we are here. To talk, we have our guest speaker, Miss Casey Star Long, um, great woman of God. I get, to, I have the honor and the privilege to be a part of a prayer call that she's a part of. We 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 pray together every Friday, huh? Or at least listen to it. Somebody's praying. We're we're on it, or we moderate, depending on the schedule. She does one week, I'll do another. Um, but before we bring her on. 
How was your day today? Uh... I was lonely today. You were lonely. Yeah, I was lonely. You didn't ask me about how was my week last week. How was your week last week? It was very emotional. Okay. Uh, but you made it. Yeah, I went home to clean out dad's uh, clothes and get the house straightened up. And we were throwing away a lot of his stuff, sweater. Like, my dad was a man's man. And yes, he dress. loved to dress. Yes, he did. Um... And he had suits and sweaters and shoes and just mm-hmm. getting rid of some of that stuff. I had to keep one of his shirts. Well, I kept some of his clothes just mm-hmm. because, you know, but I kept one specific shirt just because that's where my memory uh, of him being in, mm-hmm. you know, because he always mm-hmm. used to wear this one shirt. But it was good. It was m- emotional roller coaster. Uh, mm-hmm. The grieving process started back up say okay. the least and um came home uh i helped uh well no i did all the barbecuing for the church life church of atlanta <laughs> oh and where the good deacon Listen, you were assisting the head deacon yeah while you yeah handled the grill he can go and do all his yeah other that's things. what he said so you know what we are here. We're servants. We're helping. Yeah. He said, because he called me the other day. He said, Doc, I need your help. And you know, I'm always you know there. What? I'm always there for let the, for the deacon. Let me tell you brother. Humble is the way. I know, but just, just <laughs> let me finish. I, I uh, called him up and, uh, I mean, he called me up and wanted to, um, wanted, needed my help. And so I assisted him. But I didn't know I was going to do all the work. Mashad said it was, the barbecue was amazing. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Good, good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I had to help the, the right Reverend Deacon Bernard home, and, you know. Okay. Yeah, but then I came home, and then you went out again on me. So you went to the party. I went to the uh, birthday party to uh, celebrate Sweet Sister in the Lord. Had a wonderful time. It was more than a birthday party. It was a networking yeah. event at the same time. Mm-hmm. Hey, what's, what's next week? Next month. Next month. Next month is Breast Cancer yes. Awareness yes. Month. Yes, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Yes. And let's see here. Let me make sure I change that. Key. So, um, yeah. So next week. So if next, next month. month uh-huh. So if you haven't already, uh, go out to Amazon or you can go to uh Life. Let me clear this one up so you can see. Uh, this was actually supposed to be five. Uh oh. Wrong one. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. That's we gotta. Our guess. We gotta get back. We gotta yeah. get back in the groove of things. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of uh, a little we, crazy we're today. Back, we're getting back in rhythm. But um. Yeah. So life change. Life uh interruptions. interruptions. Yes. His beauty. Her battle. It's yes. about breast cancer from a male's perspective. Yes. Uh, make sure you go out. You can go to Amazon or uh, lifesinterruption.com if you want a personalized copy. Yes. Go to life, and we can um sign it for you go to life's interruptions and purchase it there at the website or if you just want a book you can just go to amazon so i don't want to belay i know we've got a little late start so yes we're going to do it right into this i want to um introduce mm-hmm. um our guest for tonight and our guest is her name is AC Star Long. Yes. Uh, she is the uh, she is an author, a speaker, and she loves to use her voice to point people to Jesus. When she's not writing, she's either working out at the Orange Therapy Fitness uh, or sewing. God delivered her from uh, food addiction, and she led leads an online support group. And host a pod ca- podcast called Loving God More Than F- Food. She is the proud wife of Alfred T. Long, Sr., and together they lead a non for profit serving prisoners and their families. Uh, you can connect to, to, with her at inspiredoverflow.com. Uh, and it's some, um, oh, you know what? This is, uh, and then she has her own YouTube page as well. And I would like to bring on our guest let's welcome her let's the welcome one her. and only mm-hmm. yes yes casey <laughs> star mm-hmm. let me see if i i, I don't have my yeah, there, there we, we go. go there we go yay yay yes yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
Hello, I hey, apologize for the technical difficulties. I apologize. Please, please forgive us. Yes. So it, it's all good. I was just interceding. I was just praying. Carlette knows. Yes. <laughs> like when the oh, yes. when when the technology started tripping, I said, "Okay, okay, you know, the blood. I, come uh, on, God." Uh, and right. so, yeah. Uh huh. It comes through. Yes, yep. yes, yes. Thank you so much. Well, we appreciate you taking the time out, coming on our show, Chris yes. and Carlet Live. Yes. And yes. we're here to talk about your book and loving God more than food. See all this food I got up here? Mm-hmm. All of it. All of it. I see. I see. You got you got a lot of I used to call it good stuff, but good we'll stuff. talk a little bit about yeah, that later. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we got some uh, whipped cream. The ready whip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some potatoes. Some of Chloe's cookies. Yes. What else do we have? Some treats right here. Pizza. Let me hurry up and eat a treat before she talks about we it. We have some. Uh, what? Yeah. What is this? That's uh, fish. Fish. That's leftovers. And chicken wings. Leftovers. <laughs> You know, all of that. Uh, spaghetti. That's whole wheat spaghetti. Whole wheat. Yes. A whole grain. But this won't do us no good if we don't love the Lord. So we're going to ask. <laughs> well, she's going to put all this into perspective. Yes, put it in perspective yes, for us. It is in perspective. So so put putting putting it into perspective, right? So I want to first and foremost, thank you all so much for inviting me to to share this platform with you all. I have great respect to producing a weekly show. Many, many, many years ago, I used to host a Christian radio show and people do not realize how much work it is to do a show week after week, developing the content, talking to the guests. And so I just honor you. I honor you too for your obedience and for your commitment to put together a quality show where people can talk and, you know, be real, be transparent, all the while giving glory to God. So thank you so much for having me. Um, but yeah, so I wrote this book, Loving God More Than Food, because for many years I struggled with compulsive overeating. And as being someone, yeah, someone that loved God, um, was a preacher, still is a preacher, um, ministered at the church, you know, just checking the box on all all these things. It was during a 50 day consecration fast that the church that I attended, where we had to, it was like 50 days before the end of the year. And so our church um, went on this consecration fast where we were to meditate on a scripture every day. It was a meditate on a scripture and then pray. Okay. And the scripture um, for one day was, it was like Psalm 139. And it's that scripture where David says, search me, O Lord, and reveal if there is anything in me and, and lead me to the, to the way of, you know, everlasting. Um, and so I read it, Chris and Carlette, uh-huh. and I was like, oh, this is, this is a familiar scripture. I've read this before. So I just read it real fast, y'all. And I said, well, God, my prayer was, if there's anything in me that you don't like, just show me. Uh-huh. So end of prayer, close the Bible, go into the shower because I'm getting ready to start my day. As soon as I am in the shower, God begins to show me visions of me eating. He shows me a vision of me standing in a refrigerator, eating, mouth chewing food, but I'm in the refrigerator looking for more food to eat. He shows me other images. And these are scenes that happened in real life where, you know, I'm eating food, I'm reaching for more food. And I know the Holy Spirit is saying, stop. You are full. You don't need to eat anything else. And I am like those characters you see on TV where you kind of have an angel on one side and the devil on the other, and they're both talking. And so God is showing me all of these images where time after time after time again, I have felt the Holy Spirit say, stop, you have had enough. But instead of listening to the Holy Spirit, I continue to eat. And God began to speak and say, 
That's what I'm not pleased with. That you're running to food for comfort. You're running to food because you're afraid. You're running to food because you're insecure. You're running to food because you're bored. You're running to food because you're lonely. And food has become an idol in your life, Casey. Mm. Food has become a God. Wow. And God is like, we need to talk about this. Let, let's address this. Let's address. So it was like right there at that moment. And so God took me on this journey about loving God more than food and living a life of obedience. That when mm-hmm. Holy Spirit says, stop, you've had enough. You don't need to eat anymore. No more. You know, loving God enough to say, God, I love you more than I love feeding my appetite. And so I'm going to practice self-control here. So in a nutshell, Mm -hmm. the book is my story. And the book is also providing strategies for people who identify with me, who have struggled with food addiction and compulsive overeating um, tips on how to break the bondages of overeating. Okay. Wow. I, I, I do have your book. Um, <laughs> and you said it, one chapter title is called Fat Meat is Greasy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Tell us more about that chapter, if you can. Just a sure. little bit. <laughs> Fat meat yeah, is greasy. so I grew, I grew up in a household where my mom would say, oh, you don't think fat meat is greasy. Yeah. Which we means to say that you don't believe that your choices and the decisions you make have consequences. Mm -hmm. And so that chapter is all about that God is always speaking, especially as believers, we have the Holy Spirit who who is our counsel. And when the Holy Spirit says, hey, you need to stop eating these types of foods. Anytime we disobey Holy Spirit, anytime we disobey God, we're opening up the door for consequences. We know that rebellion brings in, you know, all kinds of heartache and mm-hmm. difficulties. Mm-hmm. And so really the book is about, and God told me this book is for believers. If non-believers read the book, you know, God bless them. But this is really a book for those who have declared Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that fat meat is greasy. And God is speaking in this season that there are repercussions for our willingness to disobey him when it comes to food. And really, it's a it's a siren. It's an alarm for people to wake up and to really be present and hear what the Lord is saying in this season. You know, one of the things that um, I struggle with as well um, is when Carlette cooks. <laughs> no, this is a good thing. <laughs> this is like I struggle with leftovers. Like if we don't eat something, say she cooks a pot of greens and we only eat like a third of them. I struggle with leaving that um, one third in the refrigerator. One, or what did I say? One third. Flip it. Uh, Y'all, you guys will eat about two thirds and it'll be a third. Yeah, third left. left. Yeah. So I struggle with that and I I repent. I say, God, yes, Lord, uh, we're sorry for, you know, not wasting wasting food. And this goes back to not only well, Carlette naturally she has a big family and she's yeah. used to cooking large meals. And sometimes yeah. they're not proportionate to our family. As far as, wouldn't you say? I I agree. Yeah. So, I mean, but leftovers is always good, except for one person that's probably still viewing. He doesn't eat leftovers. But I just feel (laughs) bad because, (laughs) but not homie. Uh, I just feel bad because we we have these leftovers. And I think that that is a, a part of not so much, I wouldn't say gluttony, but just, you know, and I feel compelled to try to eat all the food in the kitchen. Is is that bad? What do you have to say about that? I should say, let me let you talk. <laughs> so I am, I am absolutely confident that my sis is a great cook. And, and so I, I can just imagine, right. The temptation that's in this household, but let's talk about leftovers. All right. 
Um, I heard a pastor, Mike Todd, out of Transformation Church. Mm -hmm. He addressed this issue with one of the best messages I have ever heard preached about gluttony. Mm -hmm. And this is what he said, Chris. There are two things. Mm -hmm. Gluttony is the bite over, okay? Anything that is the bite over after you reach that level of satisfaction and you continue to eat, that's gluttony. Mm -hmm. You're full, you don't need anything else, but you continue to eat. That's gluttony. We already know the Bible is very clear about like gluttony being a sin. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, is that there's a poverty mentality that says, I need to eat this, I can't waste it, um, I have to eat it, I don't wanna let it go to waste. Mm -hmm. And it could be from childhood. I grew up with the same thing where you got to eat everything on your plate. But here's, here's an opportunity where we get to renew our minds mm -hmm. that we're full. God has provided for us. We do not need to eat anymore. If we continue to eat because we don't want to waste the food, what happens is, as Pastor Mike Todd says, is Oh, but you're going to allow it to waste in you. Mm. Oh, wow. man. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's good. Wow. That's good. So you're going to allow it to waste in you. Wow. Man. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't need to. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what what is your thoughts about um and I, I i see like one of the questions are what are some of your food triggers uh what is god saying to you about these particular foods you know for me i i a death of my father passed in july uh back in june um and then sometimes you tend to um overeat are you begin to what is it what's the word called uh Indeed. binge binge, oh, eating binge eating because of emotions and stuff yeah. like that how do you control that you know so i think it's very natural um to to want to get immediate relief and comfort especially when we are hurting um and then we have cultural you know culture generational that um, food has always served as a form of comfort for us. Mm -hmm. The problem becomes is that when we allow that food to, to take the place of really where God wants to be, mm -hmm. because God, you know, the Holy Spirit, you know, the other name for the Holy Spirit is comforter, mm -hmm. right? So when we get into the habit of running to food for comfort, really that becomes idolatry because we're running to food to do something that only God can and should do. And so um, it's really great that you're becoming aware, wait a second, I'm hurting and I find myself developing a pattern or a habit of running to food. The great thing is, is that God doesn't condemn us what he does is, is he just removes the scales off of our eyes where we can say, okay, wait, this is becoming an issue and I don't want it to become an issue. So some of the things that we do, um, and this is an area that I am constantly working on, is that I have to understand that the comfort that food provides, it's only temporary. It feels good for that moment, but afterwards, especially if you compulsively overeat, you eat the wrong things. There are the feelings of guilt, yeah. shame, distress. You're angry because you're p picking up weight. You know, you feel heavy. Um, and so I have to remind myself that food is just to provide me nutrition. Mm. It is not to be my comforter. So that means that I got to slow down and spend time with God go for a walk, talk to a friend, schedule another counseling session. I have to create good habits, mm -hmm. even though my flesh wants to run to the fried chicken or to the carbs. Now, see, you just said something um, about the carbs. And, and I say that because um, what carbs does to your body 
It, it gives you a high. It gives you, and then, it, then it'll drop you. It will drop you. Um, but the, the texture of it, whether it's through the pasta or the bread or the potato, um, it's, it's very, it's very filling. Um, it is definitely a comfort food. Um, man, you, you just, you know, I think about our recipes. I mean, not our recipes, our menus. Okay. So I'm already planning Thanksgiving. Okay. So you, you should, you, if you don't know by now, I start planning Thanksgiving in August always. And I slowly shop, whether it's the, the, the linens, um, the, you know, the napkins to match the tablecloth. If I want to do a certain table setting, or if I want to get new chargers, you know, or, or, you know, stemware or something like that. And I start getting my butters and I start getting my, you know, whatever. I don't wait to the last minute. That's the last thing I do. Um, but when I plan the menu, I can go, through, I can, I'll start with one and then it, it transform over time before it's the final one. But when I look at it, like, okay, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm going to go to my menu right now. Or I can even probably find an old one. Okay, because usually I go with the one I had, I wrote out last year and either I add to take away, um, whatever the case may be. And so, of course, um, I always say, oh, I'm going to do something different this year. Oh, I'm going to do something different this year. And no, I haven't. I, I didn't do nothing different. So and and then you know what the crazy part is? I cannot find a menu. And that is not mm, like me. Maybe that's. That yes. is not like that me. It may be a good thing. <laughs> that is not like me. Oh my goodness. Uh, so anyway. Okay. So let's just say it's usually turkey, dressing, ham, mac and cheese, and potato salad, and yams, and it'll be all these carbs. But it, it's like you got to have this because this tastes good with that. Like if you're going to have macaroni and cheese, you got to have the yams and then some black eyed peas. Now, black eyed peas is more of a fiber, but it can not act like a starch. Then you, you know, all that. And these are traditional meals. Or you have the people that have dressing and mashed potatoes and macaroni and cheese. And, and then you have one green item. <laughs> Whether it be greens, green beans, or you have green beans, or you have cabbage, or whatever the case may be. And I think about that, and every year I be like, I got to do something different. I got to do something different. I have yeah. yet to do it. Wow. I'm just being honest, Casey. I have yet to do it because, again, it's a tradition. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. Yes, it More is. than Christmas. One, uh, it's my One favorite day, holiday. One day, Casey, let me tell you this. Mm. One day, her and her mom... Stayed up twenty four hours. Twenty four hours to cook. To cook. We cooked for seventy five people. I was so night. mad because I wanted her to go to bed. We cooked. I mean, I cooked a whole not a not a a a, a bushel. I cooked a case of greens. A case of greens. Mm -hmm. I we had chicken, turkey, ham. We had we had so much, and me, but only me and my mother cooked it. But twenty four hours, yeah. and I'm I'm telling so, you. Go ahead. I have a little bit of delay, so I'm sorry for interrupting you. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're fine. Okay. Um, I think Carlette, just a couple of things. Um, I know that God isn't. I believe that the Bible is very clear, right, of how we should take care of our body. Right. I also believe that like with me, um, because I used to struggle with God, like, why are you, you know, why do I feel like you are just like hovering to me about what I eat? Why are you in my business? You mm -hmm. know, um, but God has just been very clear with speaking to me. And I know with many others that there must be a change mm -hmm. with the diet mm -hmm. and um, it has taken years, but God is working and he has renewed my mind to the point that I'm looking at holidays differently. Okay. And so I'm just, I'm sowing a seed sis that, you know, that maybe something that I will say will cause you to look at holidays just a little bit different. Okay. I'm looking at Thanksgiving as a time to fellowship, 
And whereas the center of Thanksgiving is not food, this mm. runs counter to how I grew up. It right. runs counter to tradition. Mm -hmm. it, re re it runs counter to culture, all of that. But the scripture that I hold on to is do not be conformed to the things of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This mm -hmm. you will know the acceptable and perfect will of God. And so what I have heard God speak to me is, is that there must be balance mm -hmm. and order <laughs> when it comes to eating. Now, that's what I feel like God is speaking to me. I am not on a campaign to kill Christmas, to kill Thanksgiving, <laughs> to Lord, kill people's Lord. traditions. Right. But, but what I do ask and what I do encourage people is to just invite God in. Mm. You know, we invite him into everything. God, I'm going to invite you into my Thanksgiving day menu. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe there's some new dishes that you want me to incorporate. Maybe there are new traditions you know, that you want me to bring in. God, I'm just going to make room. Mm. You got time between now and Thanksgiving. You know, God, I'm just going to invite you in mm -hmm. and uh, allow God to to just speak and allow God room to move. Mm -hmm. You know what's difficult, uh, Casey? Mm. <sighs> Let me tell you. Thanksgiving. So she cooks these lemon pound cakes and it's so hard. So I'm on the new health kick now <laughs> trying to eat more healthy, trying to reduce my carbs and my sweets. However, she goes and sometimes she brings, she brings home, uh, she brought home cupcakes for the kids the other day. She, uh, cook I forgot you you did something else that I was you know and it's it's hard you know especially when she cooks cakes oh we had um, a friend of ours over who Terrell who helped us start the show she cooked a pound cake for him and she cooked some sweet potatoes and all this other stuff and it's very hard to say no so it's like god is really testing me to say are you going to eat it are you going to eat it are you going to eat it and then the food is saying come and eat me come and eat me come and eat me and i'm like i'm in a battle i'm at a battle of the wits which one do i choose do i choose what's not good for me that my wife so graciously cooked or do I pick what's healthy for me that God. So it's very difficult. And it's, it's definitely one of those things that if you live in the Edwards household, you're going to have to fast in order to not eat Carlette's food. Yeah. I, I so just, just a, like... a couple of things, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, because from what I'm, what I'm hearing is right. Carlette, that's your love language. It to is. Cook, to it bake. is. Right. That, that, that's your love language. And because Chris, you're mentioning that you're on a health journey. So this is kind of new and, um, giving, you know, others in your house grace, right. To evolve as you are evolving. One of the things is, is that my husband and I, we're in ministry together. We do a lot of things together. And I could not understand why God wasn't speaking to my husband about food. Like it just seemed as if my husband was getting a pass. Mm -hmm. um, but God was like, you know what, Casey, I'm speaking to you. And so you have to be obedient to the things that I'm telling you to do. So I had asked for just some boundaries in our household. My husband, he has his own cabinet and in his cabinet, that's where his chips, his little cakes, his little stuff, it goes, I don't even see it. I don't touch it. I say, that is not my food. That helps me a lot, Chris, mm -hmm. to not be triggered. Mm -hmm. I will say another way that prevents triggers for me is that I, in this season, am abstaining from sugar and flour. Wow. Research shows the more that we eat sugar, the more that we eat things with flour, they are highly addictive. So you get like that one taste. Mm -hmm. And at least for me, someone that has dealt with compulsive overeating food addiction, it's like, let's eat more, let's eat more, let's eat more. You know, one taste is not enough. A million, you know, one is too many, a million is not enough. So um, those are some ways that help me not binge and help me really feel like I have peace 
not eating sugar and not eating flour in this season, I told somebody, I feel like I am sober, right? Because yeah, when you are used to eating sugar, processed foods, I don't know about you guys, but like Carlette, you said that blood sugar is rising up and down. For me, I'm like, okay, how can I eat more? I want to eat more. One cookie is not enough. Let me eat the whole sleeve. But because (laughs) I've gone through that detox, you know, I'm not, I'm not craving it. And the Bible is very clear. It's like in Matthew where it talks about if your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. If your right arm causes you to sin, cut it off. It sounds ruthless. It sounds really deep, but I would just say for me, the call of God on my life, Mm. I can't afford for it to be compromised. And in the past, it has been compromised because I have had a divided heart where I have loved God and I have also loved feeding my appetite. So in this season, God has given me a strategy Okay, the way to cut down on those cravings is to eliminate these things from your diet. And when we invite Holy Spirit in to speak to us, he will, he will reveal. For many years, God told me to eliminate certain foods out of my diet years ago. I wrote that book a couple of years ago. I Mm. shared it in the book that I've written. For a long time, Chris and Carlette, I did not want to surrender. I'm like, oh God, there has to be another way. Why can't I just do Weight Watchers? I can just manage it. You know, I'll just eat a little bit here. I'll just do that. But it wasn't, um, I never got the full piece. I would do well for a little bit and then go back to overeating. And God was like, Casey, you know, I've given you the path to to help you love me more than you love food. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes, you know, God is, he's given us a plan, you know, like, for some like type two diabetes, you Mm. can really um, eliminate that disease by a change of diet. Wow. Hypertension. You know, you can get off medication by changing your diet. Mm -hmm. And for so many people, they're like, "Mm -mm, dad, I don't like that option. Mm. I want to do something else. And we go and try to do our own thing. But God is like, I've given it to you, whether through the doctors, whether through research, you know, whether through programs, God is like, I'm showing you the way to healing. Will you accept it? Will you be obedient? So, so, um, right quick, if you love this show, if you like what you're hearing, we're bringing more of this to you now, um, every Monday at our new time, eight o'clock, uh, Eastern Eastern time, Mm -hmm. seven o'clock, uh, central. Please like and subscribe if you like our page on Facebook and YouTube and subscribe on YouTube. If you like the content and want us to, and we will, we are going to keep going regardless, but just, just go in and and like it and subscribe, please. We just need your subscriptions if you don't mind. So Casey, what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing is that we need to take the cookies and set them away. We need to take the potatoes and set them away. We need to take the uh, whipped cream, take them away, except for if you're a married couple. I mean, I mean, you know, I'm just saying we part of marriage ministry. Just add some spice in your marriage. No, I'm just play. <laughs> take the uh, pizza away. Take the spaghetti, the whole wheat. That's away. that's a whole grain. I'm though. just saying. I'm just. Oh. Take the fried food away. Take the barbecue sauce, the open pit. Not too many people know about open pit, but uh, take that away. Take all the, the, the potato chips and the little snacks away. Take I the like how you fruit do. cups away. Take the chips, the jiffy peanut butter away. Take Smoke sausage. smoke sausage sausage away take the box cereal box away and then take well, this back here and then once we take all that away we can get back to God. <laughs> well that's well. what you're saying yeah you know and just speaking about diet um, 
like I said, I, I never want to be like the food police because we know that, you know, food is, it's, it's good. Food is not bad. It's just, um, it becomes a worship issue. Mm -hmm. It becomes bad when you are worshiping food than, than God, mm -hmm. you know, if it's not in its rightful place. So I always tell people, listen to God, ask God about your diet and yeah. invite him in. I know that with my background, if I look at my family history, addiction is present in the bloodline. Mm. Um, and so I know that I am prone to suffer from addiction. It's easy for me to get compulsive about something. And so I believe that this is God's way of intervening to say, this is how to stop this addictive behavior when you eat these certain foods. When you eat these certain foods, it triggers dopamine in the brain. Mm -hmm. And the brain is like, I want to eat more. And one way that we can get past that is by eating whole foods. So like you have like the whole wheat spaghetti, which is great. You know, think about eating foods that come from the ground, not foods that are boxed or highly processed. Yeah, like the spaghetti is good. Your fruit, your vegetables. It's great. You got, you have a wife there, Carlette, yes. who is a great cook. You can Lisa, experiment my. with all kinds. Yeah. You can experiment with all kinds of healthier dishes, your favorite dishes, just making them a bit healthier. Mm -hmm. The greens are great. Mm -hmm. I love to eat greens, you know, and proteins, eating protein rich foods, your meats, your beans, um, some of the veg vegetables, you know, um, I am never hungry. I eat well. Wow. You know, even without having sugar and flour, I eat well. So what mm -hmm. do you so, eat? What yeah, do you somebody eat? asked that. I want to make sure. Uh, Brenda Jones, uh, she said, what are some of the things that you do eat? And if you have so questions, to, I'm sorry, if you have questions, please put them in the uh, comment line of either YouTube and Facebook and or Facebook. If you have comments or questions, please, yes. or more questions. So start off with breakfast. What does breakfast look like? Okay, so for breakfast, I have a protein um, and I have a grain and I have a dairy. So for breakfast, that's either oatmeal, cream of wheat, um, and I eat like boiled eggs. And I usually have yogurt for lunch and for dinner. I always have a protein. I have vegetables and I have a grain. So that might be like um, today I had grilled salmon in the air fryer, which was delicious. Um, I had what did I have? Oh, I had some mixed vegetables, some zucchini and broccoli. Um, and I had some corn today for dinner. For lunch, I had two uh, roasted chicken legs and uh, leftover veggies um, and I do fruit um, for snacks um, you know yeah beans um, baked potatoes sweet potatoes um, yeah I eat I eat good <laughs> you know for my husband um, today he had salmon and I made him a salad um, and and some corn about a half a cup of corn um, and so he has like a fudge bar for dessert. He's, he's still doing sugar, mm -hmm. but, um, we, I try to eat as clean as possible. Um, and I try to do meal prep so I don't get hangry. I can have the food just ready for me to just pop in the microwave or take on the go, but y'all, you can eat well without the carbs, um, without the sugar. Mm -hmm. Someone asked, uh, Miss Lady Allison, she said, do uh, holidays need to be centered around food? Yeah, I mean, for for me, I, I'm learning that holidays don't need to be centered around food, that I want to I want it to be centered around family. Now, um, I believe that God is using me as a pioneer in my family to change the perspective. And so I have some family members that may not necessarily agree, um, but for, for these upcoming holidays, more than likely, I will fix some dishes that I want to eat um, to make sure that I stay on plan and to make sure that I stay obedient to God. So in the past where I have been like, oh, I'm going to you know, follow what I feel God is saying, um, and it's just been too tempting to, to not really take control of that. So 
in order to make sure that I stay focused and I stay intentional um, with what I believe God has called me to do. I'm making my own dishes and I will bring them to the family gatherings. Now, Ter- Terrence said food brings family together. So does that bring us together or does family bring us together? And food is just the added benefit. That's a good question. I think And that, then he said I can only I only listen to family issues and problems if there's going to be good a good meal. <laughs> I understand that. I do. I understand this that. This guy, I tell you. No, but that's real. It's nothing like sitting up there and you know and it's like, man, okay, we we got to, you know, food, fun, family, festivities, all the Fs. Mm-hmm. And and uh, but I get what Casey is saying is not the main highlight. Mm-hmm. The family is the the main highlight. Mm-hmm. The coming together, uh, the sharing of the stories, the laughter, singing is like half food is not the center. I, and I, I get that's what she's yeah. saying. It's Pass. not the center. And- Pass. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Casey. No, just look at we can look at at our families and oh, just see how good. is it working. How is it working when food is the center? You know, like I know that um, I have had family members' lives cut short because of their inability to control their appetite. Oh, yeah. So understand what understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that food is bad. What I'm saying is, is the spirit of gluttony, um, unhealthy habits, um, you know, an improper lack of self-control with food, that's the problem. And that's what I believe God wants us to be mindful of. So there's nothing wrong with having a good meal um, and family coming together, but it's really the abuse of food, you know, and really thinking about, wait a second, is this the type of food um, that is building up my family? You know, I'm really just being honest with that. Yeah, it, nobody is saying that it doesn't taste good. Nobody is saying that, you know, the food doesn't feel good in our tummies and comforting. No one is saying that. We all know that that is a truth. But at the end of the day, mm-hmm. you know, many of us are dying because of a fork and knife. We're killing our own selves mm. because of our inability to control our appetites and eating too much of the wrong foods. Like, yes, I see the comment, discipline is what's needed. Yes. Uh, I I got a question. Okay. You were talking about health uh, issues a while back in uh, a few moments ago. And you said that um, we can, but that can be heard. I'm Uh, sorry. You, you said that um, we can reverse a lot of like type two and high blood pressure and all that. Like what type Piggybacking off of what Terrence Hall just mentioned, what type of discipline do you need in order to reduce that? And what is there specific foods that you recommend to do that? Well, I think when we look at what research has shown us and like the doctors, they're saying it all the time, um, you know, that. um, And I know that my mom, she also suffers from diabetes and I love mom. Uh, Hopefully that she's watching not to put her on the spot, but I know that there have been, you know, areas where she has just struggled with really adhering to what the doctors say. She's doing a lot better now, um, but I know that there's been like an internal fight um, that exists in her and like many of us, but we know that, you know, with diabetes laying off on the carbs, laying off on um, sugar, you know, eating more fruit and vegetables, exercise, you know, those are ways to um, prevent diabetes and ways for, you know, the body to heal itself Mm -hmm. um, and really, you know, being willing to make those decisions. And I think um, it really becomes, um, I think, a decision in your mind, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed and really being aggressive and intentional about being healed, about being healed right now? um, I lead a Facebook support group, which is called loving God more than food. It's free for anybody that wants to join us. You can just find us on Facebook, loving God more than food. We're in the midst of a 21 day challenge 
And there are about 103 of us in the group. We have made a commitment where we have inquired of God about our diets, if there's anything that we need to lay on the altar. And we are putting it on the altar for 21 days to just make room for God. Um, but I shared how just in the past, people who love me, they love my husband, they want to send food for my husband, cakes, pies, you know, just leftovers from events. And I have had to say, thank you, but I am not going to be able to transport this to my husband. And the reason why I've had to do that is because in the past, people would give me stuff, popcorn and all kinds of treats for him. And I would end up eating it. Mm -hmm. Um, But because I want to be committed and disciplined, I'm having to say no, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to be able to transport it, you know, Um, and that's a way of me just kind of protecting myself. And I told my husband, I do most of the grocery shopping. I'm not buying, you know, these things in our household. If you want them, you'll have to go and get them. And so some instances he's going to go get his fudge bars because he (laughs) loves those. Um, but you know, a lot of other stuff, you know, it's just easier for him not to have. Right. So, um, but it's just me drawing a line in the sand and anybody, you know, once you make the decision, wait a second, I don't want to live with heart disease. I don't want to live with diabetes. That's it right there. I don't want to. And so I don't want to, I don't want to take medication for the rest of my life. Mm -mm. And so making that, that decision and doing whatever is necessary to, to, you know, to live that out. And, you know, it's a day-to-day decision and um, it's not willpower. Willpower runs out. Um, but that's really where we pull on the spirit of, of God, of Jesus that's on the inside of us. God, I need strength. Mm-hmm. God, I need it. There's a scripture, Philippians 2 and 13, where it says, may God give you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. And that's oh, the that's scripture good. that, yeah, that's the scripture that, you know, I I just really meditate on to not only have the desire, right? I, I want to lose weight. I want to be healthy. You have that desire, but that God will give you the power to walk that thing out as well. Mm-hmm. And um, I believe it's God's desire for all of us to be healthy mm-hmm. and to, to live an abundant life, not on medication, not riddled with disease. Do you mind if I know we got a late start? Do you mind if we go over a little bit? No, this is good. Okay, great, great. Now, I I think we okay. It's a couple things things I want to say. Number one, I think. Do you have next week already planned? No, I don't. We need a nutritionist. We this is I I don't think this is enough. We we have to have a a follow through. We have to give even more answers and more plans. I think we should have a nutritionist on next week. So if anybody knows a nutritionist, this Casey might know. Even even if you, we want them on next week, next Monday. Um. So uh, that's that's definitely number two. You currently have a challenge going on. Um, that's twenty one days. I know you hit on it, but can you go more into it and then tell us when the next one is? Sure. And so I see that the comment came up that scri- that scripture was Philippians 2 and 13. And so, as I mentioned, we are in the midst of a 21 day challenge, loving God more than food. Um, we are on day seven. It's a 21 day challenge. And right now, if you are interested in joining the wait list to hear information about when we will start our next challenge, which will be in October, you can go to our website at inspiredoverflow.com and um, you can send me a message and I'll add you to the wait list. Um, And what that challenge is all about is you hearing from God about what foods to put on the altar. And throughout the 21 days, I send um, inspirational emails with tips and tools on how to overcome food triggers, how to overcome the flesh. We do um, a weekly Bible study. We do a weekly prayer. We have an exercise group that meets once a week. Um, and really what it is, it is a supportive community for those that desire a healthier relationship with God and with food. 
that's what the Loving God More Than Food Facebook group is all about. So even though we're in the midst of the 21 day challenge, you can still join the Facebook group. Okay. If you just desire, you know, an online community for support. Um, and like I said, all you got to do is go to Facebook and send a request, type in loving God more than food in the search tab and send a request and you can join the online community. Mm-hmm. And then where can people find your book at? You can find my book. My book is available, Loving God More Than Food, How to Overcome the Bondages of Overeating, Cravings, and Poor Self-Control. You can find it on Amazon.com. It is available in paperback. It is also available in ebook. This is a book where churches have purchased the book in bulk um, and have used it as a Bible study, small groups have used this book as well. And so it has just been a blessing. It was probably one of my most challenging books to write, but I know that God's anointing is on this book. So if you want to learn how to love God more than food, if you want practical tips on how to break the bondage of overeating, if you want to have better self-control when it comes to foods, I'm just encouraging you to get this book not don't only just get this book for yourself, but also purchase another copy for a friend, sew it into their life. Um, because there is really power and there's a great anointing on this book. Yeah, I might I might have to give my bill one. Cause we you know, I might, my bill is brother in law, B I L. So yeah, I might have to get him one because I hope he's watching. That's okay. that's gonna be his Christmas. No, that's gonna be his birthday gift because I didn't get him anything this year, so I get him a book. Okay, so I gotta bring this up. Casey, help me with something. So last year we went camping for Thanksgiving. Now, did we eat camp food? No, I cooked all of my Thanksgiving dinner, and we packed it up and took it down to that campground. We had turkey, we had dressing, we had ham, mac and cheese. We had potato salad. We had greens, um, rolls, sweet potato pies, lemon pound cake. Yeah. We had so much food that I said I would not cook like that again. I did. I said that. All right. Let- and I, um, let me say this. So I said, this is what I'm going to do. I said, I'm only going to, I'm going to cook only five things. It's down there, Chris, where it says Thanksgiving. No, oh, I said, I'm, I'm only going to cook five things for Thanksgiving this year. Do you know that's been the hardest thing to do to plan only five things on the menu? So with saying that, um, can you suggest five things that would be satisfying and and they won't be disappointed? Now, I'm not saying I'm going to do it. I just want to hear some suggestions. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you what my five is right now. Turkey, okay. turkey and dressing. Well, let's just say a protein and dressing. I don't know if it'd be. T- mm-hmm. Let's just say per- a protein and dressing. Protein and dressing. Yams. No, 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 not yams. Um, baked macaroni and cheese. See, I, I've already been told I cannot eliminate that. Some greens. So we got meat, dressing, mac and cheese. The devil got you Greens. And, and, oh, and and we didn't count cranberry sauce. We won't. Yeah. We, and, but yeah. I, do, I do make that from scratch. And then, and the fifth thing was a dessert. And the dessert being um, sweet potato pies. That's what I have so far. But I promise you, I have been, I've been turning it over, turning it, turning it. Mm-hmm. I I was like, well, maybe we can have seven. <laughs> like, and I don't well, understand. I think, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Casey. Well, I, yeah, I think that the thing is, is that, you know, like I said, I think invite God in yeah. to your Thanksgiving preparation, right? And really, what what is his desire for your family this Thanksgiving? 
the purpose of your family gathering, what does he want to do? What, what does, does he, he want, want to, do? to say? How does he want to be in the midst, right? And I, I think it's not so much about whether you have five things or whether you have 20, but is there just self-control with it? Yeah, right? that's, tr- that's you know? true. Because I can make yeah. three pans of dressing. Well, who needs three pans of dressing? <laughs> and believe me, she can. <laughs> But maybe, maybe if you really enjoy cooking in large quantities, I do. maybe there's another family. There's <gasps> another family that you can bless, right? That is you know, true. with a Thanksgiving meal or something like that. And that way you can, you can give, you, you know, it's really about you, you know, sharing. Okay, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. Cook dinner for another family. I like that idea. That would be a blessing. From Chris and Carlet Live. Oh, I like that idea, Casey. Oh, I like Mm -hmm. that. Call it the pop. But see, they they would have to get it like a couple of days early. They would pop it in the freezer, you know, and then pop, then unthaw everything on Thanksgiving. Because we got to, we got something we got to do. Mm -hmm. i had to figure that Mm -hmm. out oh i like that idea man okay okay what you trying to find this picture from thanksgiving last year i can't find oh but anyway wow so so i think this is the last chapter you said you have the victory the victory over eating and and uh, I guess um, and uh, and just a victory in Christ over you know I guess to me your flesh and you know um, being able to really subdue what's the word I'm looking for really uh, uh, subdue the amount of food that you eat and start eating healthier and you know what when you say you have the victory. How is there an example of someone that you've helped that you can see a change spiritually, emotionally, physically, you know? Yeah, so the the last chapter was really important for me to to share because whenever you're dealing with a stronghold, and that's really what it is, right? When the enemy starts, well, when God first starts speaking to you about changing your diet, Um, The enemy does not want to let go of this territory. So the enemy is going to constantly fight and tell you that, no, you're always going to desire fried chicken. No, you could never be vegetarian. You could never be vegan. You could never, you know, not eat these types of foods, you know, for holidays or whatever. So there's always this war. There's always this struggle. Um, And so the, the last chapter is really about assuring the reader that through Jesus Christ, you have the victory. That when Jesus died on the cross, he died for our sins, but he also died for and died and rose for our healing. And so um, everything must bow to the blood of Jesus. And that includes food addiction, you know, carbohydrate addiction, diabetes, all of that bows to the blood of Jesus. It bows to the throne of Jesus. And it's really important for us to understand that because the enemy is always constantly in our ears and we live in a society that is so food driven and culture driven about doing whatever it takes to just please your flesh, you know, eat this, supersize this. So you always need to um, just constantly meditate. Wait a second. I am victorious through Christ Jesus. That's good. I am more than a conqueror. (laughs) through Christ Jesus. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. Let this mind that is in Christ be in me also. You know, you constantly have to keep the word of God in front of you and in you. As far as um, people, you know, that have been blessed by the book, I have received so many emails, so many messages from people who have read the book and who have shared how it is like, scales falling off their eyes or how they feel like they feel heard they feel seen you know I don't know about you but I haven't I grew up in church but I have not heard many messages preached about gluttony about food addiction and I think that this book gives language it gives a voice that yes you can love God you can be in the church and you can be struggling 
And I think we see people in church who are overweight or dealing with obesity. We see it in our pulpits, but people aren't really talking about it. And I want to say this too, um, because for those that see me in person, they're like, oh, you don't look like you struggled with compulsive overeating or with food addiction. But one of the things that I learned um, just through this journey and what God told me is it's not about what you look like. Gluttony is a spirit Mm -hmm. and people have different um, metabolisms, genetics. I'm six feet tall. So, you know, my weight, it's going to, you know, get areas that might be different from somebody that's five, five. Mm -hmm. And so you know, it's not about what people look like on the outside too. Some people you could tell like, yes, they struggle with food, but then there are some people who are skinny, who are using food um, to feed emotions or, you know, really dealing with the spirit of gluttony. And that's why it's important where we don't look on the outside, we look at the heart too. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, people can be like, well, I'm skinny. I don't have an issue. God's not talking to me about food just slow down and ask God and invite him into your, into your diet, into your, into your way of eating, you know, Romans 12 and one, I think it talks about, you know, offering our bodies to God as a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And when you are, when you are really serious about that and saying, God, I give you my body, Mm. you know, um, I've gotten to that point, God, I give you my life, (laughs) you know? Yeah. If you're saying give up these foods for a season, for a lifetime, I'm at the point now in my walk where I say yes, you know, and in the book, I share how I struggled, how I've been around the mountain over and over and over again. And finally, I've gotten to the point. It's like an addict that hits, you know, ground zero. You know what you know is what you know when you get to that point where you're like, I can't do this anymore. I've tried to do it my own way. I don't have any peace. I'm not happy. I don't feel healthy. I don't feel like I am living the abundant life. Jesus has died on the cross. And so God, I'm ready to surrender. And many of the people who are signing up for the 21 day challenge, they are at that point where they're like, look, I am, I'm ready to surrender. I want to have peace Mm -hmm. in this area. And um, there's no peace like being in obedience and being in the perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. I'm trying, I'm trying to, uh, correct my ways and eat right. And I'm proud of you. You went walking without me this morning. You did good. Every day. I, you know, that's my goal. Like we have a challenge too at work. Um, we connected an app. These fitness apps, uh, are good to, to kind of monitor your, uh, exercise and stuff and look into get a subscription to uh one of the health gyms around here uh cuz i need to look get this weight off of me get the stomach all this this is your stomach <laughs> you not to say this is your better watch it this is your stomach i weighed 170 pounds when i got married i weighed 21 115 years pounds when i well, got married well you get kids so is is children br- the effects of breast cancer treatment all, all of that yes mm-hmm. all of that but this is this is yours you made you created this you know i don't agree with that yeah you did because if you if you ever come behind chris after he'd been somewhere you can see what he's eating. <laughs> right, you can see like a little trail, huh? No, you no. can see the wrappers, this, this, that, and the other. You know no, what I'm saying? No. But you still did it, though. All these pound cakes. and Chris, you know. I made a pound cake, Casey. I made a pound cake. Ask me when was, when was the last time I made one Yeah, that's true, that but you one. still made one. Chris, we still going to eat stuff. No, I'm still okay. going to make cakes and pies, cakes and pies. So you can... Tempt the other person. Chris, listen, I don't do it often, so you can't come for that. You cannot. Well, we cannot go into just totally up, oh, no, we'll nothing. We'll take this off We're the gonna record. We're going to eat air cakes. <laughs> air cakes. I, I had people yeah. asking me, said they want me to drum up. A, one of the church mothers said, yeah, I saw you gave that pie away. It was a buttermilk pie made buttermilk. A lot mm. of people don't know it. Fat That's an old school dessert, buttermilk Fat. pie. So you're going you gonna to tempt the other person? No, they saw me give it to something. Yeah, I saw you give it to because honey, you didn't give it to me. I got to get because she's one of my favorite church mothers. I got to you got you got to make her a buttermilk pie. I, I will buttermilk. say this really quickly, right? So, um, 
sometimes like in my household, in the long household, um, I am, I'm on, I'm on this, I'm on this journey. My husband's not, he's not all the way there. He's better than he's ever been, but he's not all, all the way there. And for a long time, I struggled because I'm like, we do everything together. You know, why would we not do this? Um, but I have, I've had to learn, Chris, mm -hmm. that, you know, when God is speaking to me, I have to be obedient and I'm going to trust God that he's going to continue to speak to my husband. And as he speaks to my husband, it may not look like what he's speaking to me. Mm -hmm. It may not look that way. He may never, ever tell my husband, lay off sugar, lay off flour. You know, we're wired differently. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, God, he sees, you know, minefields and pits that we can't see. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he takes all of that into consideration when he starts speaking to us. So I just encourage you, Chris and Carlette, do what God is telling you to do. Amen. You know, and um, if you're able to walk together, hallelujah. If the other person says, no, I'm not going to walk, you continue to walk. And, um, you know, I have found that way. There's just peace and harmony and you're still able to do what God tells you to do. Wow. Wow. This, this was a good show. Good, good show. Good show. Okay. I'm putting it out there. We need a nutritionist. We We need, we have to. We got to end it with a plan. We got to continue with a plan. We got the spiritual. Now we got to get the book, get the book, get, get the, the book. book, get the book. Get the, put the book up. I did. I, well, okay. I put, yeah, there it is right there. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. The book. And, and again, tell us where we can get the book. Yeah. So you want to get the book loving God more than food. It's available on amazon.com. So make sure you order the book. Look, don't just get one for yourself, but get one for a friend as well. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And then um, I want to end the show with Casey praying. Um, can you pray us out and uh, for the for the viewers and, and yes. for those that may be struggling and so forth? And then uh, we'll just uh, end the show, just you and I after that. And go for it. Absolutely. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for your presence. And Father, I thank you, God, that you will use the words that have been spoken through this broadcast. Lord, let these words penetrate the heart and minds of each and every person that sees this broadcast. Father, my prayer is, is that we will make space for you to speak. Father, speak to us about our appetites, about our desires. Father, if there is anything that has sat on the throne of our hearts that has moved you out of the way and it is now in the throne of our hearts, Father, I ask that you will expose it. And I ask God that you will give strength to each and every person that desires to love you more than food. Father, I thank you for the will and I thank you for the desire and the power mm -hmm. to put you first. Your word says to love you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And I thank you, Father, for the anointing to be able to do so in Jesus' name. Lord, bless the Edwards. Bless them, Father. Bless the work of their hands and bless their health in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Thank you. We'll give you a call after the show. And, yeah. uh, okay thank you all right thank you thank you Take so much bye. all right bye-bye okay this let's see here awesome. yeah this was awesome i had my prayer partner on the show <laughs> i love it yes yes so um yeah this was good this was really good good information again uh if you um i'm trying to put this back um, uh, uh oh, wrong one. Bam, there we go. No, not that one. Is that it? Uh, no, that's not it. Uh oh. Anyway, let me just clear this out. So, um, yes, if you would like to, uh, if you enjoyed uh, watching, please like and subscribe to our YouTube and Facebook page. Make sure you comment, 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 and we appreciate you. We come on every Monday at 
uh, our new time at eight o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time, seven o'clock Central, and five o'clock for those in the West Coast. This was good. So I'm going to start walking even more. I did. I think I did two miles today. If you walk to all the way to our friends, yeah, house, but I walked did. a little bit further down to the little. What you oh call well, you did two point two five. Yeah. Yeah. Round so, trip. Round trip. Yep. Two point two five. So yeah, this was uh this was a great show. And um yeah, if you know anyone that's a nutritionist yes. out there, please nutritionist, uh, nutrition specialist. Send us a IM. Yep. Um, I want them on the show next week. I'm yep. putting that out there. Yep. Our neighbor's uh, daughter's a nutritionist, but I'm not sure if she's gonna come. She's a yeah. Oh, then, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you're gonna have to call him, maybe. Oh yes. Yeah, so Thank you all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to Chris. Somebody and Carla. said they got this helped them. Oh man. Somebody just personally, I'm not gonna put it their business out there. They text you? Yeah. Oh wow. That this just helped them be set free. Wow. Mm-hmm. Eatabo. This this I'm telling you. Yes. Thank you, Miss Brenda. Thank you, Terrence. Thank you. Everybody. Gary Bush, here, Pastor, Pastor Gary Bush. Bush was on. Faithful. That's our cousin. Miss Jeanette, I see you, honey. Jeanette Avila. I see you on here. Yes. yes. That's all I can see right now. All right, you going to close us out? Listen, we love you all. We appreciate you all. Thank you for being faithful and consistent and supporting us. Go like and subscribe on YouTube and, and like us and follow us on Facebook, Chris and Carlet Live page. It's the same name on both face, face, Facebook and YouTube. Um, also, um, listen, I tell you all every week, love God, know him in the pardon of your sins, receive him into your life. And if you say, I already got him in my life, okay, let's get more intimate with him. Increase your prayer time. But no matter what, seek the face of God. Call on his name while he is near, okay? Call on him. He needs you. You need God more than ever. We need him more today than we did even on yesterday. Okay. So we appreciate y'all. We love y'all and keep God first. Peace. Thanks for joining us this week on Chris and Carlette live. Make sure to visit our website, Chris and If you're on Facebook, share this broadcast. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe to our show. You may also find us on Apple podcast where you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. Let us stay in contact with you by texting CNC Live to 474747. That's CNC Live to 474747. CNC Live.